A 12-year-old's brain may have stopped growing in size, but it's nowhere near done developing. Abstract thinking, problem solving, and logic are all becoming easier. They show improvement in reasoning and information processing as they continue to mature. The young adolescent may demonstrate the capacity for long-range planning, and the ability to consider other points of view and feelings, and this capacity continues to develop as they grow older. However, the prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain that plays a role in impulse control and organizational skills, is still maturing. So don't be surprised if your 12-year-old engages in some potentially impulsive behavior. By 12, most children have a strong command of language and communication skills. They are able to think beyond literal interpretations, and proverbs and idioms won't fly over their heads anymore. You will probably get your first taste of sarcasm and slang, and they will understand tone, as well as the actual language. 12-year-old might show more concern about body image, looks, and clothes. Focus on themselves. Going back and forth between high expectations and lack of confidence. Experience more moodiness. Show more interest in and influence by peer group. Express less affection toward parents sometimes might seem rude or short-tempered. Feel stress from more challenging school work. Develop eating problems. Feel a lot of sadness or depression, which can lead to poor grades at school, alcohol or drug use, unsafe sex, and other problems. Children or teens and adults alike experience stress. Stress is typically caused by an external trigger like an angry sibling shouting you can't have my game. Or a parent insisting a child or teen needs to stop playing and do their chores. Feelings of stress are naturally built-in mechanisms for human survival and thriving. These feelings are the body's way of warning you when there is danger and calling your attention to problems that need resolving. As a parent or someone in a parenting role, you can help your child or teen learn to identify and manage their stress an important skill they will use throughout their lives. Children teens ages 11 to 14 are in the process of learning about their strong feelings dealing with academic and extracurricular performance pressures, and growing friendships. All these new experiences and expectations can cause stress that is typical for all children or teens. In the case of Hannah Aquish, born on March 1774, she was a 12-year-old Pequot Native American girl with an intellectual disability who was hanged on December 20, 1786, in New London, Connecticut, for the murder of Eunice Balls, the six-year-old daughter of a wealthy farmer. She is believed to be the youngest person executed in the United States. In recent years, Aquish's guilt, culpability, and the fairness of her trial have come into question. As the public may wish to be informed more particularly respecting the criminal, Hannah Aquish, than they have yet been. She was born at Groton. Early in life she discovered the maliciousness and cruelty of her disposition, as appears from the following fact, which was represented in evidence before the grand jury. When about six years old, she with a brother about two years older than herself, meeting a little girl at a distance from the neighborhood. They endeavored to get away her clothes and a gold necklace which she had on. After beating the child until they had almost killed her, they stripped her, 
and disputing about the division of the clothes the child recovered, and getting away came home, covered with blood. This affair was immediately examined into, and the select men of the town concluded to bind them both out. Their mother, who is one of the Piquot tribe of Indians, is an abandoned creature, much addicted to the vice of drunkenness. She, it seems, not liking to have the girl bound out, brought her away and left her at a house, about three miles from the city of New London, promising to return in a few days and take her away again. But she did not return till after several months, when urging the family to keep her longer they at length consented. She continued in this family until she was apprehended for the crime, for which she was executed. Her conduct, as appeared in evidence before the Honorable Superior Court was marked with almost everything bad. Theft and lying were her common vices. To these were added a maliciousness of disposition which made the children in the neighborhood much afraid of her. She had a degree of artful cunning and sagacity beyond many of her years. In short, her mind wanted to be properly instructed, and her disposition to be corrected. The victim, six-year-old Eunice Balls, the daughter of a wealthy farmer, was found dead on July 21, 1786. Aquish was questioned and said four boys were near the scene of the crime. When the boys could not be found, the investigators further questioned her and she confessed. On the 21st of July, 1786, at about 10 o'clock in the morning, the body of the murdered child was found in the public road leading from New London to Norwich, lying on its face near to a wall. The neighborhood turned out to hunt for the murderer. Hannah was questioned and claimed that she had seen four boys near the scene of the crime. When the search failed to turn them up, Hannah was interrogated again and then taken to the Ball's home to be charged with homicide in the presence of the dead child. She burst into tears and confessed. Five weeks earlier, Eunice had reported Hannah for stealing fruit during the strawberry harvest, and Hannah had plotted revenge. Catching sight of her young enemy headed for school one morning, Hannah had lured Eunice from her path with a gift of calico, then beat and choked her to death. One day after the murder, Aquish was accused of killing Balls and confessed. She was arrested for and charged with the murder, and was held in pre-trial prison. The murder was reported in the July 27, 1786, issue of the Norwich Packet. The only inculpatory evidence against her was her confession to the investigators. The confession was never corroborated by anyone besides the investigators. The Fifth Amendment was not available at the time of the events. Her confession reportedly included baiting balls with calico, beating her nearly to death with a rock, strangling her to death and placing rocks to stage an accident. The confession specified that the motive was that Balls had earlier accused her of the theft of strawberries. During Aquish's trial, she pleaded not guilty at the direction of defense counsel and seemed unfazed and calm as the rest of those present, including the presiding judge, were brought to terrace multiple times. The court found her guilty. Although Aquish's youth was considered, it could not be a mitigating factor, so the judge decided. The sparing of you on account of your age would, as the law says, be of dangerous consequence to the public, by holding up an idea, that children might commit such atrocious crimes with impunity. He sentenced Aquish to death by hanging. 
Under the state of law at that time, age and disability were not mitigating factors. The age of a criminal was considered inconsequential. Swift and relentless punishment was viewed as the only practicable method of keeping the lawless element in check. Additionally, under the Murder Act 1752, a conviction of murder required a mandatory death sentence by hanging within 48 hours. As she awaited execution, Hannah's anxiety grew worse, and she spent most of the day of her hanging in tears. At her execution, on December 20, 1786, she thanked the sheriff for his kindness as she stepped forward to be hanged. Spectators to the execution said that Aquish appeared greatly afraid, and seemed to want somebody to help her. The Supreme Court deemed capital punishment for juveniles in the United States unconstitutional in 2005 as cruel and unusual punishment. However, this affects only later cases and does not apply retroactively to past executions. Thank you for watching Death Row.